Right now, we just want to get your um, animal up to the point where um, it looks like the animal that you want and not just this funny little lump of clay. So, let me put my deer over here. So this was the one in the demonstration that I had made. And then, um, so I'm going to show you a little bit with this, but I made a second one too because as I was looking at some of your um, your gesture sculptures, you know, it's hard to just demonstrate th this project because everybody's doing a different animal. With the coil pot, with the, um, the slab thing, everybody was kind of doing the same thing, but this can go a lot of different directions um, depending on your animal. So I have a couple different shapes here. But this one I thought was like a good sitting up animal. So this could be like a dog, a rabbit, a fox, wolf thing, whatever, right? Like it's could be a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you just some tips today. I'm not going to take this to the level that I took my deer because when I worked on that deer, it took me hours and hours. Like it took a long time and a lot of refining. Um, and you don't want to sit here and watch me for hours. You just need some pointers to get going and then you're going to go do it on your own. Okay. So let's, um, let me get this turned off here. And so I can stand up and do my demo for you. So I just wanted to talk to you, starting off with some of the things that I saw in the slides here. So one of the things I'd like to point out is the looting. So in a lot of your slides, yes, it is messy. Yes, it is lumpy as a gesture sculpture, but you'll notice that I don't see any marks where things are attached. So I want to start by attaching some legs to this and some back hind legs to this. So you can kind of see a couple of tips about how to make it um, and, and attach it well. So here's what I see a lot of people. Let me grab my clay. I see a lot of this when I see sculpture. So this is like a dog fox animal thing. I see a lot of people start with their animal and then they take like something that they want to be a leg and they add it on like this. And then it kind of, they just loot this in right here. And I saw this on some people, so I just loot this in. And then it looks a little strange because it's sticking out here for one. And for two, it's gonna wanna break off really, really easily because it's not looted underneath there. So one of the things that I wanna tell you guys about is the fact that, and I think I kinda said this in the first demo, but um, clay is both additive and reductive. So when I'm looking at something like this, I'm not necessarily always looking to add on to the sculpture to make it look good. Sometimes I'm looking to take away. So when I'm looking at this, instead of adding the leg on, I might look at the front and say, you know what? I can actually take this part away. Like that. And then I could also start thinking about the arm coming from the body. Like usually there's like a shoulder blade. So I might want to take away where the hip bone is going to go. And this is just my paper clip, my loop tool, but I did duct tape mine to a, a pencil. So it looks, may look a little different, but it does the same thing. But I'm going to want to maybe think first about taking clay away. And so one of the things about this sculpture that's so hard is that you guys are only getting a small ball of clay, but when you start taking this clay off, then you've got it and you can use it for something else. So while I was taking things away, I was saving this, putting it in my plastic bag and saving it so I could use it for something else. Now, if you go too deep, you're gonna hit newspaper, right? Like right here, I went too deep and I'm gonna hit newspaper. So if I do that, I'm just gonna push the newspaper in a little bit I just using a pencil or you can anything your finger if you can jab it in there and then I can take some of that clay because it's still squishy it's still plastic I can just take some of that clay and plug it up and kind of fill that in right so now I'm starting to see that this is like a shoulder blade and this is a foot and then when you know when I think about like if this was like a dog this part is maybe going to be sticking back a little bit further in space. Now I'm not looking at a picture right now, but you guys should be looking at your pictures as you're doing this. And 
you're going to have to be looking at all the sides. Like, what does this look like from the side? What does it look like from the front? Okay, that looks pretty good from the side, but it doesn't look so hot from here yet. So maybe what I need to do is kind of scooch this forward, look from the front, squeeze this paw out a little bit, And now I can start really refining this. Now this is not super, it is wet, it is plastic, it is moving, but it is not sticking to my fingers. If your clay is sticking to your fingers too much when you're doing this, you need to just pause. Let it dry a little bit more and then go back to it. So you can see I didn't even add any clay to this yet. And I'm starting to get that definition of the leg. Now, if it's not sticking out far enough, I want it to stick out further, then I'll add more to it. But I don't need to add the whole leg necessarily. I can just add a little bit for more definition. And then I can start defining the foot. I'll switch to my pin tool here. And I can actually take away some of this negative space. So I, I just, the, the point here I'm trying to make is think about not just adding clay on, but think about carving into it. And that's how you're gonna get the, that whole three dimensions. Now with this back leg, I feel like the only thing I would need to stick on would be the little paw. And again, when I'm looting, if I'm attaching something, I'm gonna loot the bottom, I'm gonna loot the side, I'm gonna loot the top. I might as well loot these two things together for more strength. I can make it look separated, and I'm gonna to flip to the underside and make sure I've got all that too. So I'm starting to get more definition with that. Okay, so two points. Add clay on, take clay away, and make sure you loot everything. It should feel like almost like a solid piece of clay the whole time. I even see this space here. If I wanted to make this sturdier, I could take that little piece of clay and I could make it one solid piece on the bottom instead of separate legs stuck all on, okay? Now, as I get into this more, Again, if it's too sticky and I can't smooth it out, then I'm going to wait a little bit. But I started noticing as I was working on my guy, you know, that I needed to push and pull and I needed sometimes to like turn things if I wanted his head to look a different way and manipulate that while it's soft enough. And then I could do the same thing to this other side, but that's kind of where we start. And then we start getting into step two, a little more definition, and then we refine from there, okay? So next thing um, I wanna talk about, and let's talk about it before I forget, um, the tail. Let's say this is like a tail, like a dog, and it's got a long tail. I am seeing a lot of this stuff with arms and legs too. So I'm seeing somebody want to put a tail on and they're just sticking the tail on like that and then getting it looted. But again, don't forget the underside, there's going to be a crease there. You're going to want to loot all sides. Right, So I see a lot of animals with tails that are kind of thin sticking out like this. Let me do the other side because it looks better, right? Sticking out like this. Now, that is going to be not, this one's kind of thick and I looted it all around so it wouldn't be horrible, but this is going to be the thir first thing that's going to want to break off. So if you have something like a tail or in like an elephant ear that's sticking out or something like that. If you can make this relief sculpture instead, it's going to be better. So I probably wouldn't even be ready to put the tail on at this point, but when I was, instead of making the tail stick out like this, 
I would consider curving the tail up so that it could be more like a handle that at least is a little bit stronger or I would consider making the tail actually rest on the animal's back like this. That way I could even loot the whole thing. Remember I said the more you can make this one solid piece, the less likely it's going to be to break. I could loot all the way around. And yes, I know it just looks like a lump right now, but then as I began my refining process and I wanted to make this look more like a tail, I could take, like I have this pencil here, I could just take the pencil and I could kind of reintroduce that line around it. Now it is one solid piece and obviously I would need to you know make this look a little more round and play with it. So it's one solid piece of clay now but it's starting to look like the tail here and it's not sticking out it's not going to break. So anybody that has an appendage that's just sticking straight out like this whether it's an arm or a tail or something consider how you could make it a little bit more attached to the body. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna do a zoom in because this one's gonna be a close up. I wanna talk to you about um, doing some eyes and details like that. So let me zoom in super close here because it's gonna be itty bitty. And I'm just gonna show you how I do the eyes. So let me take my deer here. He's, I've got his um, ears all wrapped up in paper towels because um, I want the body to dry out right now. There we go. It's a little more focused. I want the body to dry out right now because as I was starting to add my designs and I was incising, I was getting these rough spots. So if I can get it to dry, I can kind of smooth this stuff off a little bit. But I know those ears are gonna dry very, very quickly. So I have damp paper towels wrapped around his ears there so that they stay soft while the rest of him can dry out. So that's a little thing you can do while you're working if you wanna control the drying on certain areas, okay? So that's why he looks weird. He's got all this stuff on his on his ears. Um, but I want to show you the eye like this if you want to try this. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're making the eye is you're going to want to start by making an eye socket. Right. So I'm just going to do one side here. But what I see a lot of students do is they just take the eyeball and they stick it on there, and then it looks um, they look kind of bug-eyed. They're too big, too bulgy. Right. So if I'm gonna make an eye here, the way I did it is I used the paper clip, the loop tool, and I actually removed the place where I was going to put the eye. Now if you think about this, when you're building with sculpture, um, one of the things that you wanna think about is bone structure and, and the muscles, right? Because you're thinking about anatomy. And if you think about a skeleton, I also, one of the things that, I, it's not in your kit, but if you have one, is I just had this old cruddy sponge um, in my house, and it just makes like a nice pillow for him when I'm working on him, so you can find something to kind of rest them on so they don't get dented here. Um, so you want to think about bone structure. So if you think about like a skeleton and how big the eye socket is, like it's pretty substantial. So I made a big old hole there. And now I'm going to make an eyeball. So I'm just going to take a little piece of clay in my hand and roll it around. And then I'm going to put it in the eye socket here. And then I'm going to make two little baby coils. Okay. So I got a little tiny piece of clay, put it in my hand. And I like to roll it in the palm of my hand because the palm of my hand has a natural curve. And when I have a natural curve, it ends up getting thicker in the center and sort of tapered out here towards the edge. And those are what I like to make my eyelids out of. So like some little tiny baby tapered coil, and then I kind of flatten it. And then I'll end up laying this over it for making the eye. So let me make one more, cause I gotta make a lower lid. And then we're gonna talk about emotion and how you make an animal emote. So, um, 
a lot of you guys probably have dogs at home, right? And when you go out and you come home, your dog is super excited to see you. And you can tell that your dog has an emotion, like he's happy, right? Well, my students always tell me that dogs smile, but you know what? They don't. They definitely show their emotion through body language and things, but not through their mouth, like humans smile, right? You can totally tell a person's emotions by looking at their eyes. So here, let me show you, this is my little trick here. So if I want more of like, let me get more of this more flat here. If I want like happy dog or sad dog, I can take the eyelids and I can put them more back here. If I want, if I want angry dog, I can take his eyelids and I can be like, he's mad, right? So how you place these eyelids is going to be important just for how your animal shows emoting. So I usually start with the lower lid like this and I just kind of place everything where I want it to go before I really, really loot it. And I really look for that emotion that I'm going for. I don't really want my thing to look angry. So I'm going to try to curb this one up. And I'm playing just with like that inside line until it looks like I want it to look. And then once I get it how I want it to look, well then I'm going to go ahead and loot. I don't have my little plastic knife here, so I'm going to use, I don't know what I did with my little plastic knife. I use this pencil. I actually found too that I loved my paper clip tool um, when I was playing with this. It, it's supposed to be for carving, but because it's not super sharp like the loop tools are in class, like it actually did a decent job of kind of getting in there and cleaning stuff up. So then I just kind of blend this outside part. And then if he, sometimes when you make the eye socket really big, this ends up, the dog looks hungry. Like he looks like emaciated. So after you kind of add that on, then you can start playing with adding some more of the brow bone. So if I pull this guy back in here, I can fill it in and make it look a little bit thicker just by adding some clay underneath it. But the first thing I always do is I focus on that line. And then I'll, this is what I call fleshing it out. I don't want him to look like too thin. So I give him a little, little meat on his bones, right? So I can start adding that clay in and filling it out so he doesn't look too thin. And even like some more definition to the brow bones and things. And I started playing with this deer too, like as I was kind of adding and fleshing him out and giving him some, you know, cheeks and things like that. Um, and I added onto the bridge of the nose. And then I, I also turned it this way so I could see, you know, if the width of the face looked how, like how I wanted it to look too. Okay. So that's enough on eyes. It's not finished. Like I said, I'm not going to, it took me hours. All my refining took a long time, but I'm just going to show you some basic stuff that I did. And then I want to show you, let's see what else is on my list. Um, form, not line. Okay. Let me talk about that. So let me go back to, I have a hard time leaving things unfinished. Let me zoom out here a little bit. Let me go back to this. So if I was going to, um, I want to show you the difference when I say some things should be form and not line. If I was going to make this just line work, I could draw with my pencil and just be like, okay, here's the foot. And this might help you like to get started to find stuff. Here's the leg and then here's the back leg. Now what I've done here is I've just drawn on here. So that would be line. That's just a drawing of a leg. The form part 
is when you start to carve in and take away and round things out. So if I want to start with line when I'm starting with something, but then I want to turn it into form and I don't want it to look square or unusual. So after I begin to push and pull the level of the depth, now I'm starting to get more form, but now it's looking kind of strange and square. Then I can kind of go in and I can round things out. And start making things look a little more like they have some form, form and they're not just drawn in. Push back on that armature and kind of create that space. And then this looks a little flat. So again, I might add a little clay to the, the front of it to make it look a little more round and a little less squared off. So it's very little clay that I'm adding to do those kinds of things. Okay. So that's kind of rough. So that's what I mean by form and not line. I want to see, if you hear me make that comment, like I'm seeing line, it just means it's drawn on and it's not having that three-dimensional feel. One of the things I found, aside from saving my little scraps and keeping them wet as I was pulling stuff off, is because it's such a small little amount of clay and it's not like you can just go to the clay bin. When I got short on clay and I, like, I needed to make his ears, but I didn't have any clay left at all, I flipped him over and I stole clay from the underside. So nobody's gonna see this part. I don't need all this clay. So I started like just, this is still soft. So I started saying, all right, I could steal this clay. And I, now I can make my ears with it, right? Now I can push my armature in and smooth this out. So it's a little prettier. I mean, this wasn't, in the end, a total mess, but I did start stealing clay from that edge as I went to keep going. So I'm gonna use this clay that I just stole and I'm gonna show you how to do ears. All right, there's a way to do and a way not to do ears. So one of the things you, I always say is that when you're sculpting, you should add the clay and then sculpt. You should not sculpt and then add. So let me show you what the difference is. All right, where's my, there it is. All right, so I see a lot of students do this, like when they want to make ears, they'll take their piece of clay and then they'll say, okay, I want to make ears, so I'm going to roll myself a slab. I'll do bunny ears. My animal sculptures always get really weird. They look like, I don't know, bizarro animals that have been swimming through like nuclear wastewater because my dog grows bunny ears and fish scales and all kinds of weird stuff happen. So my dog is going to grow bunny ears, right? So if I, I see a lot of students do this. All right, I'm making bunny ears, so I'm going to roll a slab. By the way, I'm showing you what not to do right now. This is a no-no. And then they like cut it out and they're like, okay, here's my pretty little bunny ear. And then they have this bunny ear and they, they score and slip or something and they put it on Mr. Bunny Foo Foo, right? I see that a lot. So I'm going to keep this here. I'm going to show you the difference, but here's what the issue is. Number one, it will not be strong. It's going to want to break really easily with that connection. Number two, it's oddly square, not natural looking at all when you start with the slab, okay? So fragile and weird looking. We don't want that. So let me show you. I'm going to take this ear off and I'm going to, I'm going to do a different bunny ear and we'll put them side by side and you can see how the other type looks better. Okay, sorry, this is like a weird bunny dog with one eye. All right, so for actually making the ear, here's what I want to do. I want to take a ball of clay. You could score and slip if you wanted to um, for extra insurance, but I don't. I'm just going to take it, and I'm going to take that weird ball of clay. Look at this. I know, it looks weird right now. I'm just going to take that weird ball of clay, and then I'm going to loot all the way around because that's the key to making things strong is not just looting the front or the side, but looting his eyes are getting angry as I'm smashing them. But making sure that that ball is looted all the way around. All right, see it? 
very well connected, super strong. Now, when I want to make Mr. Bunny Foo Foo ear, I can just start pinching this lump of clay. I need just a little bit of water on my fingers to make it slippery. But I can start pinching this ball of clay and start to, start to shape the bunny ear. And the, th the thing about clay is, is that whatever the edge is, that's how people judge thickness. So you could have a really thick bunny ear, but people would think it was skinny if you pinched the edge thin. So I, I leave it relatively thick. Hang on, my hands are getting goopy. Just got to rinse them off a little bit. And then I pinch the edge thin, and it will believably read as thin. Then I can fold it. Mind you, I'm doing all this without a picture, so it may look like some big funny mouse looking thing when I'm done, but. Now I can play with something more natural looking. Okay. So something a little more natural. It's sturdy, it's attached well. The edges are thin so it doesn't look square. This is other Mr. Bunny Foo Foo's ear. Okay, so see the difference? So if you hear me make the comment to you, make sure that you add and then sculpt, you're doing this. You're not sculpting and then adding, okay?